It's a study of ambition. And it's a study of morality. And our leading character, Macbeth, is a great general in an army of um, Duncan, who's king of Scotland. And the witches, who I mentioned earlier, foretell a prophecy to Macbeth that he will become king of Scotland. Um, and um, once this seed has been planted in his mind, he then becomes very, very obsessed with this idea. And how is he going to become the king? Because there's already a perfectly good king there anyway. And the answer is, of course, that he has to um, kill him, or that's one option available to him. And his wife, Lady Macbeth, is also very keen on the idea of becoming queen, um, and she encourages him to, to do that. And in a very terrifying scene, um, Duncan comes and stays with them, stays the night at their castle, and Macbeth kills Stabs Duncan. Um, very interesting, this happens um, off, off stage. Um, it doesn't happen on stage. Uh, I only heard recently that um, the, um, the etymology of the word obscene comes from the Greek word obscena, uh, off stage. And if you know Greek drama, you will know that there is never any violent action on the stage. It all happens off stage because it is obscene. And then so, so there's a sense that obscene things happen off stage. Uh, Shakespeare's a bit more, uh, he doesn't mind putting a bit of obscene stuff on every now and again. I'm you, so. If you look at the first, um, I'd just like to look at the, if, does everyone got either or is able to share one of these handouts? Yeah. I'd just like you to look at the first uh, of those three sections here, just like to look at the first one. What happens is after Macbeth has stabbed and murdered Mac uh, Duncan, before the body has been discovered, um, two characters arrive. They've come to actually take Duncan on on the next stage of his journey. One is Macduff, who will have a large part to play later in the play. And the other is this bloke called Lennox. Now, Lennox is not a part that actors queue up to play. It's very short. You've basically only got one speech, which is this one here. We don't know much about him. We don't know if there's a Mrs. Lennox or Little Lennoxes or anything like that. You know, he's a, he's a very, very small character in this play. And um, Macduff goes off to wake up Duncan. And there is a kind of an awkward silence while Lennox is left on stage with uh, Macbeth uh, because Macduff has got to go in, go up the stairs, find the body, come back down and tell them. So there's just a few moments. And Lennox says this to Macbeth. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And, as they say, lamentings heard in the air, strange screams of death, and prophesying with accents terrible, of dire combustion and confused events, new hatch to the woeful time. <coughs> the obscure bird clamoured the livelong night. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. Macbeth rather tersely returns, "'Twas a rough night." Uh, and uh, Lennox then says, my young remembrance cannot parallel a, fig a fellow to it. And then the scene moves on. Now, if we look at a, sp a speech like that, let's say we are studying this play with our students or with um, some young actors. What are the questions we need to ask? Well, firstly, I think we have to say, What's it, what's it mean? What does this language actually mean? And I think a lot of it is pretty self-evident. Um, the night has been unruly. I mean, there's been terrible storms. Strange things have happening. Cries in the air. It's a ha ho horror movie stuff, basically. Um, and um, 
Lennox says, where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And so there's a sense that they've had to go somewhere. They've had this terrible night of storms and unrest and strange sounds in the air. A terrible, terrible evening for them. Um, Shakespeare sometimes does this. I think it's brilliant when he does this now and again. You must remember that he is writing for a very, very democratic audience. He wasn't writing for a highly sophisticated audience of um, scholars and, um, uh, and so forth. He was writing for an audience. That's why he made his money popular material, you know, popular culture. So every now and again, you find this in Shakespeare. He kind of says, if he goes off on a bit of a flight of fancy, like this one, um, the obscure bird clamoured the live long night. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. Partly what Macduff, Macbeth is doing is kind of, it was a rough night. Everyone got that? Right. You know, we, can, we can kind of go on with the sense that I'm explaining it as I go. But there's a technique we sometimes use in, in drama, which we call hot seating. When we take an actor and we say, you're, right, you're playing Lennox. And all we know about Lennox is this brief section of the play. What questions might we ask him about this character? We might say, how far have you traveled? We might say, how long were you on the road? We might say, what's your reaction to Macbeth? Because quite often a preconception is that the person who's talking, particularly if you've got somebody talking a lot of Shakespearean blank verse, is a very high status character. Um, Hamlet comes on the stage continually and talks at great length to the, to the audience.